Hi guys, how are you doing today? Well, if you're new here, hi, my name's Elizabeth and welcome to our channel. Now, if you guys like true crimes and mysteries and of course the unknown, you're at the right place. Please hit the like and subscribe and the bell so you can get notified of our latest videos. We appreciate you so much guys for all your help supporting our channel. This is the case of Wendy Mae Davidson. Wendy Mae Davidson was born in Texas on July 23rd, 1978. Her father's name was Lloyd and he worked at a factory. Her mother's name is Judy and she was diagnosed with lupus and that caused her to stay home. Wendy had a younger brother named Marshall. He was born in 1979. The family lived on a farm in Angelo, Texas. This town is a small town and the only large town is about an hour and a half away. On the farm, they did have many animals, including pigeons and parakeets. Wendy loved to take care of the animals at a very early age. And then at the age of seven years old, she knew that someday she wanted to become a veterinarian. That was her dream. She did very well in school academically, but she was struggling socially. In 1996, she graduated high school and she was a second in her class. She seemed not to have any empathy for others and was had a very hard time by being accepted by people. She soon started college at the Angelo State University. She got a job at the veterinary clinic, her dream job, and she worked only on summer breaks. Her brother, Marshall, he would do maintenance work part-time at a veterinary named Dr. Terrell Sheen. When Lloyd lost his job at the factory, he was hired by Dr. Sheen as a contractor. It was years later when Wendy would get a horse and she would keep the horse on Dr. Sheen's ranch. Later, Marshall found work and became a game warden. He became a law enforcement officer. Wendy finished her prerequisite courses and she enrolled at Texas A&M to study veterinary medicine. It wasn't until about four years later into her courses, she had became pregnant and she did terminate this pregnancy. Then she became pregnant again and this time she kept her child, which was a son and she named him Tristan. He was born on October 29th, 2001. She did graduate in May of 2002. She began to work at an animal hospital that was in Abilene, Texas. The business was being sold and a man named Dr. Larry Ellis had purchased it. Wasn't too soon, Dr. Ellis found Wendy to be too hard to manage. She would not follow orders. She would become hysterical when she did notice that animals were being scheduled to euthanize. This would really bother her. She was fired from Dr. Ellis's because she did not follow his orders to euthanize a whole litter of kittens that had feline ringworms. Because of that, there was a breakout and the result of 28 cats being infected by it and were all euthanized. Now get this, she had become pregnant again. She didn't have the pregnancy, she did terminate it. But she did have a hard time euthanizing kittens, but I guess the baby is okay. Then in 2003, she was in a bar in Abilene, Texas. It was the day before Thanksgiving. She had met a man named Michael Severance. They had left the bar and went to her place afterwards. Now, who is Michael? Now, Michael was born in Maine on July 20th, 1980. He was two years younger than Wendy. He had enlisted in the Air Force and was stationed in Abilene, Texas. His title was a C-130 crew chief. He had deployed five times in the Middle East. They started becoming a couple and it didn't take long. She had became pregnant and she called Michael to let him know that she was with child and they had decided to get married. She was living in Lubbock, Texas by now because she found a job working at another veterinary clinic. This was about two and a half hours away from Abilene. Michael did not go out to see Wendy that much in Lubbock, Texas. This had made her think that he was maybe having second thoughts about them getting married, but those thoughts did not stop their relationship from going forward. 
Then in April 2004, Michael had met Wendy's family. No one really liked Michael, especially Judy, her mother. She had said that he was rude, disrespectful, and he was lazy. They didn't stop them from getting married. Michael, even though her family did not like him, they didn't matter to her. She had wound up moving back to San Angelo, Texas after she had upset her employer in Lubbock, Texas. She had always wanted to have her own business and being a veterinary clinic. Her, so her family had helped her to get a clinic up and running. The good old Dr. Sheen, by now, he was retired and he had the building that he was owned by another veterinary that was already retired. And he did rent it to Wendy for $1,500. Now, Wendy's parents had the building renovated that did cost a pretty penny of $40,000 to do it. The clinic did have a one bedroom apartment inside of it, and she had planned on living there with Michael. While it was being renovated, they had to stay with her parents, Judy and Lloyd, for the time being. As you can expect, this caused a lot of tension between them all. Then in 2004, Wendy became pregnant again. She had another boy and she named him Shane. Then right after she had Shane, Wendy and Michael and the boys had moved into the clinic, into the one bedroom apartment. They did get married on September 13th of 2004. Michael's father came out from Maine to attend their wedding. Michael's father had said that Judy and Lloyd were very impolite and distant. When the wedding was over, Michael's father returned to Maine. He had told the rest of the family how he did not understand how Michael put up with the terrible treatment that they were giving him. Then in January 13th of 2005, Michael and Wendy had got into a bad argument and it was very emotional. Michael had taken the two boys to Abilene, Texas to visit some friends. And then when he returned back to San Angelo, now I'm guessing here that Michael and Wendy had patched things up together, at least it seemed. But when he came back, Judy had taken the two boys to her home. Michael had felt that Judy was spending way too much time with the two boys. On January 14th, Wendy and Michael decided to go to a restaurant for dinner. They were planning to make a trip to Maine on January 16th. Michael wanted Wendy to meet his rest of his family, and so they were going to fly there to meet them. After dinner, around 7.40, they had left the restaurant, headed to a bar right across the street from the clinic. They had spent the night dancing and drinking. Now, only one that knows what happened was Wendy for sure. But the authorities say this is what likely happened. After getting back to the clinic from the bar, Wendy had put five phenobarbital pills in a beer. She had given it to Michael to drink. This would render him unconscious. Then she injected him with a veterinary euthanizing drug called euthanasia D. This is what killed him. Then she loaded his body into a truck. She also put wire, fishing line, and a number of heavy items like concrete blocks. Then she drove the truck into the ranch that was owned by Dr. Sheen. She did have keys to the gate because she kept a horse there at the ranch. Then she backed up the truck at one of the ponds on the property. She then took Michael's body out of the truck. She had dragged his body onto a wooden platform to the edge of the pond. She then went to the pickup got the wire blocks. She had went back to Michael's body. She had tied the heavy blocks and objects to his body. Then she rolled him into the water. She got back into the truck and headed back to the clinic. It was like business as usual. She had opened up the clinic at eight in the morning. By this time it was Saturday, January 15th. Not too long after this, she did call and cancel the tickets to Maine. Then on Sunday, she made a phone call to Michael's family in Maine and this was on the 16th. It was at five in the morning. She had asked them, she'd asked them if they see Michael and they said no. She did tell them that Michael was missing since Saturday. She also told them that he, she took the children to her parents' house at 3 p.m. When she got back home and she looked for Michael, he was nowhere to be found. Wendy had spent the afternoon on January 16th sleeping on and off her parents' house. 
She finally reported Michael missing at 6.43 p.m. to the police. The police came to the clinic. They did notice that Michael's pickup truck was in the parking lot. And as they searched, they did find his phone also inside of it. She then told the police that Michael had talked to her about running off to Canada. On Monday, she went down and got a divorce papers to file, and then she also got a restraining order. It was on Jan 26th, Wendy went down on her computer and searched for information on how a body decomposes in water. She had learned how a dead body can float. She got worried and returned to Dr. Sheen's ranch, and would you know it, there was Michael's body floating in the pond. She had found a boat and took it out to his body. She then got a knife and stabbed him 41 times. The gases would escape and then she would tie him even more with heavy objects and threw him back into the water. Then she went home. On March 5th, 2005, they had interviewed Wendy and they told her that they knew about the internet search and also the trip back to the pond. She had become very upset when they mentioned the pond. This caught the investigators' attention, and then they were on the way to Dr. Jean's property, and they did a search. They had to intervene Wendy, because she was trying to get through the gate, and they had to stop her. Then later that day, she had called her family and told them she was being chased by somebody. She asked them to meet at the local cemetery. Now her brother Marshall had a right first. Wendy had told him that really nobody was chasing her. She wanted all of them to get together. She wanted to wait till they all together before she would even talk. But Marshall had insisted on her telling him right now. So Wendy gave in and she did tell him. She said, I did not kill Michael. She had found him dead and then she had panicked. That instead of calling the police, she just just disposed of his body in the pond of Dr. Sheen's property. Now Marshall was a game warden and he knew to call the police and he told them what his sister had told him. The police had arrived and they went over to Wendy. I had overheard her telling her family, I thought one of you did it so I moved the body to protect you. The police had took Wendy in for questioning but she had refused to talk to them. The pond on Dr. Sheen's property was searched, and sure enough, they did find Michael's body. Wendy was arrested for tampering with evidence, and she was released on bail. It wasn't until the autopsy came back on Michael that Wendy had been arrested for murdering her husband. The drugs that were used by veterinarians were found in Michael's system. The police had discovered that Wendy had falsified documents to explain what had happened to the drugs that was missing from her clinic. She had used them on Michael. Her story was that she gave a massive quantity to a chihuahua named Wheezy, but all this was not true. And there were no chihuahuas harmed in this crime, by the way. Then in October, 2006, as part of a plea deal, she had pleaded no contest to murder. She was sentenced to 25 years and then 10 years for each of two counts for tampering with evidence. This time will be served concurrently. Wendy was eligible for parole in 13 years, but she was denied it in 2019. Her next eligibility date is 2024. Her release date is 2031 at the latest. Well, this is the end of this case. Tell me what you think. Do you think she really murdered her husband, Michael? And what is your theory of what happened if she really didn't do it? Who did? I'm off to another case. Thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate you. Until next time, you take care and be safe.